Music Matters. Here today with Sammy Pluto, San Francisco, man. How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm honored to be on here. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Dude, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. This is a sick place we're in, and, and I, I don't know. It's cool to have an interview out here again. It's been, like, the majority I've done recently been, like, San Jose. But the past, like, week, I've kind of been in the city. It's cool. Like, I feel like I'm getting more of a network tapped in, more out here, more out here. Making new friends out here? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. There's a, there's well, a, there's a lot of talented people out here. I'm sure you could benefit from 100%. Sure. You're one of them. Yeah. What part of the city are you from? Um, so I grew up in the Richmond district, um, and I went to, to Lowell High School out in the Sunset. Okay, so you grew up out there, and then is that where you still live, or what? Uh, no, I now live in the inner, well, I'm inner Richmond. I used to grow up, I lived in the outer Richmond when I was a kid, and I now live in the inner Richmond. Okay, so you have a bit of a commute out here. Not that bad, but... Not bad at all, man. It's, it's like... 25 minutes? I mean, if you want to hop on the bus or, or, or take, uh, take a drive, it's like a 10-minute drive. From here. Oh, shit. To downtown, yeah. Okay. Yeah. The bus is damn near easier, bro. I've always exactly. said this. Like, if I lived exactly. in the city, I would. I don't know if I'd drive that many places at all because it's, it's just bro. the parking. For sure. Yeah, exactly. You come You come downtown, you come to a spot downtown, it, it takes 30, 30 to 20 minutes to find parking. So, at least. Yeah. I mean, I just walked around here for a solid 30 minutes mm-hmm. looking for parking. Mm-hmm. It's a demon out here, bro. It's a beast. Conquered, like, where I'm from. That's I never have to think about take, that. Take your shit out your back door, bro. You don't want your shit getting bipped either down yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> that's a different beast, too. Mm-hmm. Like, that's something, again, I just don't even think about. Mm-hmm. I'll just leave whatever in my car. Yep. It's fucking scary. <laughs> so, you said you're from San Francisco originally. Yes, um, when you moved out to Richmond and then you're kind of coming back and forth here, do you do most of your work on your music out in Richmond or here? Or where do you record at mostly? So it depends, man, on the mood. Um, I tend to do a lot of home studio recording. Um, uh-huh. It's kind of where I find myself the most locked in, um, into my zone. Um, but, but there are also some times where I want to make some music with, with, with a couple guys that I work with, a couple producers, um, and I want their opinion and feedback on, on shit that I make. So I, I will pull up to, to a downtown studio. Um, and yeah, I mean, depends, depends really what, what, what kind of, kind of song I'm trying to make that night so that's interesting yeah. so do you feel like when you're working from home that you're more comfortable just because you have everything around you or what yeah I think that the only reason I feel more comfortable is just like I don't have um sometimes I I, I deal with a lot of yeah sorry this is a, oh, no, you're chilling. a loud spot um I mean people have feedback obviously and I, I love feedback but mm-hmm. like sometimes I really need to to hear the beat a couple times and, and lock in catch a melody and, and feel like I'm in my own zone. And that's hard to do when you have five or 10 guys in the studio or whatever, people in the studio chirping and, and letting the, giving their 10 cents that I don't yeah. really care about sometimes <laughs> to be honest. But, but yeah, I mean, but it's also good to have that team to work with. I have a couple guys that I lock in with and we create songs together. So, so you keep that circle pretty small, like in Absolutely. terms of people that you work with. Oh, for sure. Cause I mean, the, like, I mean, I have to be locked in with you and know that exactly what your your, your uh, perspective is and, and how you you're rolling with this music shit and if it aligns with me and if you really have my best interest then I'm gonna keep you around and, and we'll work together and, and make each other grow. So Yeah, that makes sense. I feel like when people a lot of people, like especially when they first get started, they're just so eager to work with like anybody yeah. else in their area that just happens to be making similar shit to them. Mm-hmm. But I do feel like it's very transmittable and like it's very audible on a song. I mean, yeah. people don't have chemistry. Yeah. So I feel like it, I, I've always felt like meeting somebody first, being mm-hmm. cool with them, like being homies with them, and then hopping on a track with them, really, it adds a lot to the song. Yeah, yeah I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm a big part of that, man. I, I really believe in uh, really connecting with somebody or just knowing somebody before you work together. It makes, it, it makes the situation more comfortable, for sure, when you're making creative content. In the early days, when you first started making music, was there somebody who like got you into it or did you kind of just like gain interest from it, like from an outside source and then kind of just pursue it yourself? That's a good ass question, man. Um, I mean, I've always been involved in music since, since a youth. Um, I grew up, uh, playing trombone and, uh, I was involved in jazz band and, and I played jazz band in high school. And then I went to, to college, kind of took like a breather from that, trying to figure out who myself, who I am as a, as a person. And uh, um, when I graduated, I finally just, I was like, I really enjoy music and I want to I wanna tap into that and, and see what I can create. And I think I could go somewhere. But as to the question, like anybody who inspired me um, or like why I got into it, 
I'm a big fan of, of Lil Durk. I think that the, the path that he's been on and, and the way he built his shit is, is absolutely re- remarkable. So I, I really, that really intrigued me and it, and it definitely had a part in getting me involved in the music industry. What about like the way specifically? Like he kind of came up because I don't know. I, I, yeah. I don't, I don't know that much about like Lil Durk's come up. Yeah. I mean, so I, I've been listening to him since I was in like probably like seventh or eighth grade before. And this is around when like Chief Keef came out. So like Chief yeah. Keef came out and then Dirk kind of started to release some music and, and I was really interested in his tapes and, and the sound he was bringing to the table. It was just different. Um, and I just saw him grow from like nobody really knew who he was until like mm-hmm. now he's like one of the top artists in the world, which I just found I found it amazing. So and I think that's something that like anybody could do but like you just got to believe in it and and just trust you trust your self-worth so it's definitely a testament to like being seen Mm -hmm. overnight because like i i feel like i went from not knowing who little dirk was like when i was younger to like Mm -hmm. seeing him absolutely everywhere and it's like every artist like i don't really like the term underground artist that much or like more specifically i don't really like the term uh, overnight success like the term overnight success kind of bothers me because like we see it as overnight but mm-hmm. that's just because that's where we see it. In reality, mm-hmm. that's not what actually happened. What happened was this person right. stayed up late nights grinding, right. working for five years, and then their right. success came overnight. Like they were just, they hit a tipping point where everything changed. There's a, there's a book I, I love by Malcolm Gladwell called The Tipping Point, and it, it kind of references this, this like exact idea. Mm-hmm. It's the idea that like behind every like overnight success, there's like years and years of work. Then we just, but we just happened to see it one night. Everybody's an overnight success in that, in that regard. Yeah. I mean, it's it's just like the image of things. Like you see a song that does magnificent numbers, you're like, oh, he just blew up overnight. But, yeah. But really, it took ages of work to to really get to that song and find that comfort zone and lock in and just like I mean, I, people don't see the the after hours or like the the work you put in behind it that really made you get to that song or that idea that really helped you pop off. So. I almost feel like it's disrespectful to call somebody an overnight success because it kind of like it kind of invalidates all the work they did to get to that point, you know. I mean, that's everybody's dream. Yeah, always. It's just like, oh, I just want to make a song and like it'll it'll pop off. Like, I'll drop it tonight and oh shit, it's gonna be at a million views in a month. But like, that's just it's not how it works. And people like that don't even understand the extravity that goes into oh, sure. making a song. They don't understand. Yeah. They just think you record something on your phone and you can just put it out. That's not exactly how that works. It, although it although it, it is starting to get more and more like that, but I mean, as long as you had like it, it does. I will say, I mean, I have only been involved in in this shit for a year and a half or two, but mm-hmm. but you need a team at least. You need you need a Hell couple yeah. people that that you need somebody who's producing, like engineering and all that shit, or somebody who's like marketing all that. Um, because I mean you 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 drop a song, but it also takes like an image and a brand and everything to help you rocket your career. So, I mean, it's for me personally, like I, I I'm not a professional at, at that kind of like marketing brand shit. So like I have a team surrounded with me of guys that I trust. So I think that's, that's definitely pivotal for everybody's career. Not to be back on my literature shit, but uh, another, <laughs> another book that I love is called the Think and grow rich by Napoleon Hill. And they talk about this concept of the mastermind. I, I reference in, the interview, in, in a bunch of interviews, but um, it's essentially the idea that, like, you should picture the team around you as, like, everybody who is the best in their perspective field sitting at a table. And if, if, if they don't gel, like, if they don't have one common goal, there's no reason for them to be at that table. Mm-hmm. But if they all have one thing they're working towards, then it's, like, it creates this concept of the mastermind. It's, like, it takes the best parts of all of them and then puts it towards one common effort. Exactly. And I mean, like that, that's, that's what I've been building and my team, we've been building and we're focused on, you know, supporting each other. Uh, we all know we have the same goals and we're locking in and we're trying to just help each other grow and, and be the best we can be. So before we started, we were talking about like the idea of, um, people thinking that like they can start a business or start making music or Mm -hmm. start a creative endeavor of any sort of any sort, and then just like blow up overnight but also, like, people just don't understand the amount of, like, time it takes to build and truly understand what you're doing. Is like, do you ever fear, like, the idea of like, just dropping a song and it just goes crazy viral the next day? Because, like, almost at that point you skip the journey and then it kind of makes you vulnerable to a lot of things in the industry that you wouldn't have understood? Um, no, I mean, I, I think it's always, 
like obviously I would love to have my song blow, yeah, up, of course. blow up overnight. Um and but for me personally, I, I don't fear that because I know that I, I'll, I'll stick groundly to my morals. Um, mm-hmm. I know I'd like to say that, though. I, I, I couldn't tell you, though, because I haven't had a song blow up overnight. But um, I mean, I know I know that this shit takes more than than just um, like being confident. It, it takes some persistency consistency and and some drive to to really continue career and actually make money out of this shit so i wouldn't say that I, that that gives me a fear like of, of my shit blowing up overnight but that, that's a good question though the morality so, of it is seems to be the first thing that goes for whatever reason like people yeah. almost think they have to be immoral or they have to be like mm-hmm. disingenuous once they're on but mm-hmm. i think it's becoming more and more of a popular thing to like be honest and be a genuine exactly. person when you're on. Mm-hmm. But for whatever reason, like I feel like in the past, it's been the idea is like yeah. to get to the top, you have to like do some sort, some sort of manipulation, some sort of just something disingenuous. And I, I, I get where people are coming from with that. But like me, myself, I would never feel comfortable doing that because yeah, I want to build something that I'm comfortable with being myself. At least like, you know, like I don't want to be promoting a brand or, or music that's really like, some shit that I I don't believe in or, or agree with. So well, it would also make everything less fun. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like the, if if you build a brand on something that's totally fake, like if you build a brand on an image that's not you, that's what I'm saying. when you yeah. then get to that point, when you get to the top, you you have to act like something you're not for the rest of your life. Like fuck that. That, that sounds shit. awful. Yeah. And like you might have money, but like deep down you're like shit. That's not me. Like yeah. What am I doing? So. And, like, I, I'm not even necessarily against, like, curating an image. Like, I think you have to have, like, an aesthetic. You have to have a brand. You have to be able to, like, portray yourself in a certain way that mm-hmm. is appealing to others but still, like, true to yourself. Because, like I said, otherwise, once you get on, people have this image of you that's totally fake. And then you just have to act fake in every interview. You have to act fake in every public appearance, every yeah. show. You got to be somebody you're not. Yeah, bro. Could, ne- could never be me. Um, <laughs> I, would, I would never be doing that. Um, but, I mean, I get it. I get that. People want to build something like that, and it, it is a money grabber, but yeah. it, it could never be me. Do you think you have a good radar of, like, people around you? Like, like I, is it hard for you to kind of, like, weed out and, like, distinguish if somebody around you has genuine intentions, or does it, nah. it kind of come naturally? No, nah, I'll do – I'll within, like, two minutes, I will find out. Like, I, I'm, <laughs> a, I'm a good person to, to just I'll, – I'll read you. So, if I, I can tell your intentions – Right away, low, low key, probably like right when I meet you. So yeah, and there's a lot of a lot of good people out here. A lot of good people in San Francisco. I will say that in the Bay Area that that are just grinding and they're putting out good music. Um, but there are a couple people like you know that like it will always be people that will just they don't have the best intentions. But you just gotta keep your distance from that and and focus on what you uh, think is best for yourself. I think there's, like, a big misconception in regards to, like, how the average person in the Bay Area is, and I've always thought that. I, mm-hmm. I feel like this place has, like, a a rap or, like, some kind of, like, image of, like, mm-hmm. being cold. Like, 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 people you reach out to, people around you are cold. But, like, I just have never, like, I've never felt like that. Like, navigating through this, this industry in the Bay mm-hmm. Area, I've never really felt like the average person is, like, rude or disrespectful. In fact... I feel like when I walk into a room 95% of the time, like the vast majority of musicians there or people involved in the industry, be it a manager, an A&R, whatever, they're usually like cool, genuine people. I feel like the outliers are the ones that are dicks. <laughs> no, nah, for sure. I agree 100%. Like the most, most of the people that I've ran into while working in this industry are, are very down to earth and very serious about what, what their intentions are. So, um, and that's hard to find. Yeah. And, and the Bay Area does get a bad rap, but... um. I mean, hey, shout out to Bay, man. Like, nobody does it like this. <laughs> I agree. I, I, I don't feel like it's like L.A. I think a lot of people act as if the Bay is an extension of L.A., but it's like... Oh, when, hell no. When, yeah, not at all. That's what I'm saying. Like, people just think it's one big thing, but it's yeah. so different. Like, when I'm in L.A., like, uh, around musicians or around, like, people who make music, like, I far more often get that mm-hmm. feeling of disingenuous and, like... Uh, Hey, like bro. saving face way more than I do in the Bay. Right. Maybe it's because I'm from here, but and this this is no diss to LA, but but if anything, LA is an extension of the Bay, at least mu- musically. Oh, I have to say that. Huh? That's in- why do you say that? 
I mean, if you hear the the sound that was created in the early stages of hip hop in the Bay Area, man, you look at Mac Dre, E Forty, Too Short, a lot of that kind of like blood down and traveled down, yeah, bled down to LA, and, and like, I mean, and I'm not saying it's a day, like, bro, obviously that's a, that's that's a dope ass sound, and like, people should jump on it and create off of it. That's just how music is, like. Mm-hmm. You're gonna hear it that sounds familiar to you or like that's been taken from the past, but I mean, if you look at the past, like DJ Mustard, bro, look at his like, <laughs> the kind of beats he makes, bro. How much Bay Area influence is in that? If you think about it, I uh, <laughs> that's funny. I think the reason LA is like that too is because I don't think LA really like has a sound or like even mm. a culture in a lot of regards. Like because think about it, LA there aren't that like the I mean, some if this is wrong, somebody correct me. But my understanding is like the vast majority of people in LA, like it probably, I, I I'd guess like fifty or sixty percent, sixty like probably fifty or sixty percent of people who grew up in LA, or uh, no vice versa. I'm sorry, fifty mm-hmm. or sixty percent of people who live in LA didn't grow up there. It's really yeah. like to me, it all, it all it's always seemed like it's a city of immigrants. It's like exactly. a city of people who come from other places to no. do usually do like one or two things. It's do they're like trying to do something in entertainment. You know For what sure. I mean? And and that's spot on, and that's why that there's so much influence from other places. Like not, yeah. And I don't want to say that there wasn't shit that was born in LA that was yeah. created and like you know it was of course like it was, legendary yeah. today. Like the fashion scene there is crazy, obviously. Um, I think about all the hip hop that's come out of places like Inglewood, facts, or like Compton. Facts, yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, but yeah, but but to back what you're speaking on, like like fifty percent of residents in LA are not from LA. So you mean obviously it's it's going to be a lot of influence from from different cities and different different vibes and just bringing them all together and creating some new shit. It's like a conglomerate of people coming from other Fact. places to do like different things. Yeah. What's weird about LA actually? This thought kind of just came to my mind. It's almost like a parallel to the way that like America is like a country of people from all different places. LA is like a state or a city within a state mm. in America of people mm-hmm. from different parts of America. Mm. So it's kind of like it's almost like the the mini American experiment is like manifested within Los Angeles. It's like a weird thought, but yeah. When did okay? So you you grew up here. Mm-hmm. You started making music in high school. You said correct. Um, I started. I mean, seriously making music probably mm-hmm. two years ago. But yeah, I mean, I've always been like fucking around and making music like freestyle with my friends. Why did it take it school. take you so long to like take it seriously? So I had I had went to college um, in Colorado and I came back and you know there's there's kind of a period of time you know, I think it was like 20, 21 to like 23 where I'm just like what okay what do I really want to do mm-hmm. with my life and what do I enjoy? And I just I was just like, man, you know what? Like one of the one of the constants in my life has been music. So I wanted to get back involved in music and, and do some serious uh, work in that industry. So yeah, I just I just I kinda just came had like a little self epiphany. So did what'd you go to school for? Um, I went to Colorado, I played basketball one year and then it was just education after that. So No, no, no. I mean like what would uh, you study? Oh, my, my major was media studies, and yeah, I had a minor in information science. Do you think, like, going to school and, like, going through that program, like, almost influenced you more to kind of pursue music? Because I've talked to a lot of people who, like, they'll go to yeah. school, and it just drags all the inspiration out of them, and they're just like, fuck this. This is, like, I want to do the opposite of what I studied. Um, no, nah, I wouldn't say it fully, like, like, I didn't hate my major. I, uh-huh. didn't, hate, I didn't hate school. I didn't enjoy school, I will say, at the same time, like, um, but I learned a lot, a lot of good things in school, but it, it definitely, like, taught me a lot about myself and that, like, what direction I need to, to throw myself in to be successful, mm-hmm. so, um, yeah, and to that, to that matter, I will say, yeah, it did teach me a lot about uh, where I should be going with my career. Do you work a day job, like, just a normal job? Um, I did. I just left my job and now I'm doing music right now full time. Good for um, you, bro. Yeah. I just did the same thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or I'm, I'm, by the time this is out, I will have done the same thing. Yeah. It's an empowering thing. It kind of got to the it's, point for me where it's like, it well, it's, it's empowering, but it's really scary. But it's also like, it got to the point for me where it's like, I have enough work with this mm-hmm. now to where like time wise, it could be a full time job. I'm obviously not making the same amount of money that I would be making as like sure. working day to day. But it's like, sure. I think the fact that like this can be a like full time thing now with the amount of shit I can be doing 
makes me want to like treat it like that. And then I, I just yeah. plan on like doing shit like DoorDash and mm-hmm. stuff to make money at night. Yeah, and I think it's like it's a it's a big step once you really know what you want to do. And I think that was part of me leaving my job as well. I was like, all right, like I want to put my full effort into to music. So. Yeah. So, um, I mean, and it's hard to make that step, and it's very risky. So, but I think I'm, I'm confident in it. So, was that job related to your major? Not really. Damn. No. Did do you like? Do you feel like? If you could do it all over again, and I know you said you enjoyed school and everything, but if you could do it all over again, do you feel like you would have taken a different path and just kind of pursued music straight out of high school? Um, if if some things have been differently, for sure. Mm-hmm. I was a very focused uh, kid in high school. I was I was a basketball player, so I was just pretty much just focused on basketball, basketball in school. So, um. I mean, yeah, I mean, you always think about it, like, what if life happened differently? But, I mean, I'm, I'm glad the path that I had uh, led me to where I am, so, yeah. You got to be thankful for it, like, despite whether or not it, like, happened the way that you thought That's it would happen, or yeah. it, it happened the way that you wanted to happen, you got to be thankful for it. It, it. Every step in your journey is a different lesson, I feel like, mm-hmm. and sometimes those lessons are bad, sometimes they're good, but they, you have to learn them. Yeah, man, I, and that's that's what I'm thankful for every day, Um you know, you wouldn't you wouldn't learn a lot of things if you didn't go through life before this before this point. So, yeah, everything everything leads up to everything else. Mm-hmm. Um, what kind of music did you like grow up on in the house? Like, how Ooh. did you first get super interested in music? Were you always like a music Shit. head? I would say so, but um, I had a I had an interesting household, man. My my uh, my pops is a, a big big rock fan. Um, he likes Led Zeppelin, big Beatles fan. Um. But my brother, my oldest brother, put me on the hip hop, and that's when I really started thinking. I was like, "Wow, this this shit is dope! Like this shit is like I've never heard some shit like this before." He put me on hip hop when I was in like third grade. What artist were you listening to? Ludacris. Uh. I think I remember that's like one of the time he was driving me to like football practice or something. And he was playing Ludacris, and I was like, "Yo, what the fuck? Who was <laughs> who was it? Like third yeah. grade?" I was like, "What? This shit's tight." Um, how old are you? I'm 26. Okay. 26 years old. Yeah. Damn, the ludicrous is a crazy introduction to hip hop. That's like, uh-huh. I feel like that's such like a different, yeah. like, like I don't know. That's like just a very strange and like interesting, like first rapper to listen to. Yeah, no, it was like ludicrous and um, Kanye West, obviously one of the one of the greats. He put me on to Kanye, Jay Z. He even told me about Drake before people even knew uh-huh. who Drake was. And that, like, shout out to my brother first of all. Shout out to Robbie. Shout out Robbie. Um, yeah, Robbie man, he, Pluto. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He put me onto a lot of good music, a lot, of, a lot of good hip hop. Um, and my dad also put me onto a lot of oldie shit. Like he put me on the Al Green. Al Green is one of my favorite Ooh. artists. Um, yeah. So. How long after that did you eventually make your first song? Um, shit. Probably like two weeks later, bro. I was damn. Like, I would so be, it hit you that hard. Yeah, man. I just like. I mean, I come from a musical family. Like all my all my relatives, all my my dad played the drums. My brother played the saxophone. I have another brother. He played the trumpet, um, and I played the trombone. So I mean, we would have jam sessions. You know, we like if That's we sick. all want to collab together. But yeah, I was the only one who really wanted to like sing or, or rap on, over some shit. So it hit me fast. Were your parents? I know you said your dad's like a big rock guy, and mm-hmm. then he put you on people like Al Green. Mm-hmm. What does he think of hip hop? Like, is he into hip hop? Oh, no, he fucks with hip hop for sure. He he he's more of an old school hip hip hop yeah. guy. He likes like Run DMC. That's fire. Um, Tribe Called Quest, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah, no. So he he loves what I'm doing right now, but uh, he definitely kind of kind of put me on to like, you know, outside of hip hop, like rock and roll and some blues and all that, all that good shit, man. All that shit. Well, feed feed your brain, man. You learn from it, so yeah. The history of the Plutos. Yeah, yeah. where's the name Sammy Pluto come from? Um, so I mean, I've always grown up. People used to call me Sammy P. Um, uh huh. And uh, I'm always I'm a little I'm a like I'm kind of I'm kind of a spacey guy. I won't lie. So I mean, people just started calling me Pluto. Um, what do you mean by spacey? I'm kind of in my own world sometimes. Like, you <laughs> you talk that. to me, I'm, I won't really, yeah. like, I'll, I'll probably won't respond sometimes. <laughs> um, but yeah, it just kind of, it just kind of came and, and I decided to rock with it. I was like, fuck it. This, this shit sounds fire. So 
Why not? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like the name Sammy Pluto. Like, a, like a, a lot of thoughts like came to me when I thought of Sammy Pluto. It was like, is it a planet? Is it like, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's just like a funny way of thinking of it. Yeah. Um, did you, so when you started making music, mm-hmm. were you just writing at that time? Or did you ever like, did you ever eventually get interested in doing any production or anything? I, I, I know most of your stuff, you work with a lot of producers and stuff, but have you ever thought about trying to learn how to do production or make beats? Oh, for sure. Definitely. But I mean, I, like I said earlier, like I got a, I got a, a couple of guys that I, like, I, I trust fully and like they're, they're masters at their crafts um, and they make beats. And when they make a beat that they think sounds good for me, they send it over. So yeah, in that realm, like I don't really have any like encouragement to really make a beat, but I would, I would like, I still always like want to be like learning every day. I'm a, I'm a student every day at the end of the day. So, I mean, yeah, I, I definitely will be making beats in the future. You got a pretty like close knit group of producers you work with, right? Like, do you tend, yeah. to, tend to work with the same guys, right? Yeah, I work with two. Just two. Just two. Oh, okay. Just two. Just working with like just two like that. Like, do you find that like that almost like you know you guys have like it, it's almost like being in a band in a lot of ways. You know what I mean? It's like you yeah. almost have like the unspoken cue. Like they know the kind of stuff you like to get on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they do know the stuff I like to get on, and and like. So they always, we're always on the same page, you know, and like I've, I've known both of them for, for a minute now and we're, uh, we're close knit outside of music. So it, it, it always works out. Yeah. It goes back to the idea that you got to be close to people you're making music with. Mm-hmm. So to get that chemistry across, mm-hmm. it's very audible. <laughs> yeah, um, when you're, when you're in the studio and you're kind of working, are you more of like a freestyler? Like, will you go in and just kind of punch in a verse or do you write? So, I mean, shit's been changing over the. Like the, the the last year, I've just been punching in, honestly. Free, I've been a big freestyler. But I started, like, the first first three songs that I released, or first two songs I released were both written. So, um, But I, I keep learning every day. Um, and I really started to enjoy the process of freestyling and punching in. So that's what I've been doing for the last year, I would say. Does it help you, like, get stuff out quicker? I think for me, mostly, it's just more of like a creative melody and I'm just kind of more loose with it instead of just, you know, like sometimes like this is me, but like it could be other people. But like you tend to over overthink things when you're writing. You're like, oh, I don't I don't really fuck with that melody. But when you're hmm. just recording and, and, and kind of just getting into it and locking into the beat and uh, feeling yourself, I think it sounds better. For me personally, it's like shocking yourself almost. It's like keeping exactly. yourself on your own toes, you exactly. know, because you don't really know what's coming. No, hundred percent, bro. Sometimes I'll be like, "What the fuck did I just say?" Yeah, that shit's like, that was clean. <laughs> did it take a long time to get like better and better at punching in? Like, was it rough at first, and do you feel like you're more comfortable with it now? I wouldn't say it was like rough, but uh-huh. it was definitely like you. You definitely need to work on it, and and I, I record myself most of the time, um, so. Yeah, it definitely takes some practice. I wouldn't say you just jump into it, right? Because, like, most people just want to, like, press the record button and, like, oh, I could freestyle this whole song, but uh, that's not really not how it works. Yeah. Unless you're really, like, in some type of zone. It's super different, too, than writing. It's a very, it, uh, like I said, like, it's very much, uh, mm-hmm. it's a more, like, it, 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 it's a more, like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Almost like a, not like, not like direct to entry way of recording, but it's more of like a, um, it, it, I feel like you can get a lot of like the, the spur of the momentness, mm-hmm. a lot of like the feeling that you have at that very specific moment yeah. when you punch in like that. Cause you know, if you write, let's say like you get home from somewhere and you're all pissed off and you want to write a song about something and then you like go yeah. on your phone or you, you grab your notepad or whatever and you yeah. start writing. It's so like, you're going to get all those emotions out at that time, that period of time. And then when you go to the, the studio and record it, or let's say you go and you like you, you you have to wait for like a beat or whatever or like whatever like you're not recording it the same day you write it. A lot of those emotions are going to be kind of lost in translation, so yeah. you're not probably not going to hear as much of like the uh, uh, of the grittiness right. and the reality and the and the truth of like what you're what you're thinking. Yeah, no, I agree, but I will say that like for writing, like shit, like okay, like let's just take for an example, you had a bad day or some shit. Obviously, uh-huh. you're feeling some emotions and. You want to like as an artist, as a creative create, like you want to you want to put down some shit that like how you're really feeling and and like really express yourself. So, but then I mean, yeah, back to that saying again, like once if you're freestyling and punching in off those based off those emotions, I think it's just more effective based on mel- melody wise, not 
not per se lyrics wise. Mm-hmm. So. Why you just think when you're in there and doing a melody, it, it it it's more like off top, like it's more like what you're really thinking or what? I think it's really what you're feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like I mean, I used to just like I used to have like emotions, and I used to 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 write for sure, and that that that's always a, a great way to go about it. I'm not saying that you shouldn't write. Um, but I've found that for me personally, like when I'm like really trying to express emotions, um, and I just get straight to recording, I find it more, like there's more emphasis on it. I feel like, cause I mean, when you're writing, you're not really thinking about the melody as much as when you're recording, I would say. Um, so yeah, I mean, you can't really write a melody. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> it's I mean, hard yeah, to like, you could, but uh-huh. it's just like, it, like you got to write a, like for, uh, this is also different. Like there's different process for everybody, but like, I like to write a whole song before I really step into the, to step into the booth to record. So, I mean, but sometimes you can't capture the emotions that you were feeling when you wrote that song. Um, when you record after like, like you might take two days or a day to write the song and you might be feeling completely different the next day. So is there like a part about that that like like a, a part of the whole process that's the hardest for you? Like, do you struggle with hooks more than like a melody, or like is there a specific part of your songs that like you think is more difficult to make? Nah, bro, they call me the hook god. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nah, man, I think it's mostly just 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 letting shit go and and and, and writing and and just being one with the music, like. I think that the the struggle comes when you're you're writing or you're trying to create and and you're thinking about like oh what what about like what would these people think like that shit doesn't matter this is you this is what you're creating this is for yourself at the end of the day like I mean so there's 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 struggles and and there's ways that you can overcome those struggles for sure but I feel like for me it's just like just letting go yeah, it's about like being vulnerable, right? Yeah, hundred percent. That's one of my keys, bro. That's why I'm dropping like, I'm dropping like, uh, the tape coming up. Forgotten Soul. Shout out, shout out to everybody that worked on that project. Shout um, out. And uh, yeah, it's about it's about pretty much being vulnerable. Um, I made this tape, and it's 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 pretty much me at my lowest point, being vulnerable. So I mean, that's the start of my career. So. Yeah, it's hard to be honest. Like you have to have. It the, it's hard to like break through the barrier of like. Mm-hmm. I'm an artist, then I'm a person, you know what I mean? Mm. And that's kind of circling back to when we're talking about people who kind of put on this fake facade and kind mm. of, like, have mm. this image that isn't really, like, them. Mm. It's then, like, creates this weird environment where, like, you can't really write about your experiences because right. your experiences don't match the character that you've made. Bro, you couldn't have said it better. Like, I mean, like, everybody in this industry wants to just make it like a, a, a pop and song like oh shit this shit's going off like i got money i got bitches but like at the end of the day bro can you really can you pull off that facade your whole your whole career yeah like i mean you'd be lucky if you pop off off the first song but yeah that's another pro that comes with like what had the way you record i like, kind of just mostly by yourself you said you record yourself yeah. in your room you don't really have to worry about like People yeah. around you, like, judging what you're saying, if you're punching mm-hmm. it or whatever. Yeah, and, like, it, I've been learning lately. There's, like, it's not more, yeah, it's just, like, you have other people in the room, and, like, people want to say, like, oh, I don't care what they think. But, like, obviously other obviously people. Obviously do, like, yeah. The energy is going to affect the way that you're recording. So when I do record with other people, I want to make sure that it's people that I that I trust and I, I, I respect their opinions and their feedback. Um and they're they're on the same page of the kind of content I'm trying to create and the music I'm trying to create. So, yeah, and the thing is too about like I feel like people underrate the energy of a room a lot. When Absolutely. you when you walk into a room, it's pretty easy to like sense the way mm-hmm. that everybody is, the way that everybody's feeling. Like either yeah. somebody has like a positive energy and negative energy, like it might be like a hostile energy or an inviting energy, but it's like a lot of the time, for me anyway, like I'll walk in a room and I can just tell like what the experience is and what mm. the conversations I'm going to have in this room are going to be like. Yeah, bro. Motherfuckers could be shooting dice in the corner uh, before <laughs> I record. That shit will throw me off. Like, yeah. Shit, let me get in that game. <laughs> um, I want to talk to you about Pain Show a little bit. Absolutely. What about, so that song did pretty well. What about like releasing a radio edit of it like why did you want to go ahead and do that was it just because of like the the vulgarity in the song you just want to like change it or what yeah man i mean i could dive deeper into that honestly it's funny because so my my mom's a kindergarten teacher mm-hmm. 
And obviously she can't play that song if it's got bad words in it. So <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying that had like the whole thing to do with it. It was definitely partially. That's funny. But yeah, that was a that was a reason why I was like, you know what? Yeah, let's 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 have a, a clean version. And I actually don't swear a lot in that song, I don't think. So um, but also, yeah, I mean another thing is like it, it, it reaches out to a broader audience. So I mean mm. you have a you have a clean version. Um more more younger listeners are, are gonna listen and, and yeah. Did that ver- that version did better, right? Didn't it? Or did uh, it? I don't really know the numbers per se. I think it yeah, I don't know, honestly. But it's like it a weird be. it's a weird like little marketing niche. I never like, I never really think of it like that. Yeah, but it would make sense, bro, honestly. Like I mean clean version, like, oh yeah, I could play this at, at my wedding or my, <laughs> my my holiday party or some shit. So Did your mom end up playing it for the kindergartners? Yeah, she did. Yeah, that's so funny. She asked funny. me for it, so I was like, "Yeah, I got you." I got Mom's you. like, "Yeah, I'm about to throw this on in class." Yeah, shout out, mom. Are your parents sure. super supportive of your music? Like, are they big Absolutely. listeners? Of everything you do? Absolutely. Yeah, my parents are uh, huge supporters. Man, I couldn't do it without them. So I want to shout out my parents, man. Um, they they built a legend for sure. <laughs> but like, that's that's some. I got good genes. That's awesome. Yeah, I think parenting is so strange in the way that you can like really like mold a kid to be whatever you want. Yeah. Like if you, if, if when, you know, when your kid's growing up, you teach them to be like a total asshole. It's not hard to like engineer yeah. a little, a little piece of shit, but like if you, if you do, if you do the exact opposite, you know, you build your kid up and you tell them they can do anything like the, the, the positive benefits of that are like tenfold. Like it's almost like, un, it, it's almost, you can't even like imagine what a kid could do if you raise them the right way. It has such an impact in the way a kid turns out. It really does, man. It really does, and, like, I think that, I mean, me, even myself, and myself included, and, like, all of us need to be more thankful, like, for, like, mm-hmm. the way we were raised and, and, and how, were we, how we were molded. Um, I mean, I can speak for you, too, bro. You're, you're a good kid. Like, Thank I mean, you, brother. Shit, bro. Yeah. Wouldn't be here if the old school didn't pave the way, so. Yeah. No, exactly. I was talking to my friend Junior about this last night. He He was telling me, like, he, it, it, it's funny that you don't think about like the way that everything your parents say, mm. like how much that affects you. Like a parent could have like the smallest like little side comment on something, yeah. and they have no understanding of like how much weight that holds. You know what I mean? To a yeah. child, like their parents' word holds so much more weight yeah. than the average person. Sure. So it's like, as a parent, you definitely have to be like very careful what you say around your kids. Oh, 100 percent, and I'm glad I'm not at that stage yet because yeah. I cannot raise a kid right now. Do, would you want to have kids eventually? Oh yeah, for sure. I'm definitely gonna have some kids. They're all gonna go to the NBA. <laughs> say that, bro. If it, whatever girl you have kids with, she, you, she, you, you gotta make sure she's like <laughs> your height, because you have like the genes to like actually engineer an NBA player. That's what I'm saying. And it's kind of it kind of goes to waste if you don't. Yeah, she needs to be at least five five nine at least. How tall are you? Five nine, six three. You might be the. I'm trying to think if I've interviewed anybody else <laughs> outside. Who's that? High? That yeah, I think you're the second tallest person I think I've ever interviewed. Hey, bro! Shout out Shane Farrell. He's number one. Shane Farrell, bro. We some we some tall kings. Shout out Shane. I full six seven, Damn. six 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 seven. He play he play basketball. Uh yeah, when he was a kid, I nice. used to work with him. It's it's funny. He's a manager. He manages some artists. He's he's the homie in L. A. But yeah. um. Uh, we, I used to actually we used to work at the same place. That's how I met him. Yeah, and we were we were busters. We uh we worked at the spaghetti factory. Oh, and shit. yeah, fuck that place. <laughs> but 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 when you uh, the, there's like lights that hang down over the tables. Uh-huh. So this fool, when he go down to like sit on a table, right to like bus it, mm-hmm. he was so tall that if he didn't like duck down, he'd smack his head on the light. So like the amount of times this fool would, like slide into a booth, to, like wipe down the table, and just smack yeah. his head on the light. Everybody around him would look, bro, the funniest shit. Hey, man, don't worry, Shane. You're a tall king, bro. <laughs> Being tall is a blessing and a curse. <laughs> Facts, bro. I, I, I know you not. said, like, a lot of your image stuff and, yeah. like, a lot of, like, the way you, like, curate your socials and, like, your covers and everything. Yeah, yeah. You work with a group of people. I wanted to ask you, um, they're all, like, very dark and, like, mm-hmm. black and, like, they are mm-hmm. all very have, like, very, like, monotone colors. So mm-hmm. Is that... So obviously that that is intentional, but what what about that do you think like is convincing to people, and why do you kind of curate your visuals in that way? Yeah, man. I mean, it's a good question. First of all, and and I think I have those visuals and um, that that kind of vibe just because like I just started, so I kind of want to build a story where like I want to come out to my fans that like 
being vulnerable and honest, I think is a big thing. Um, so, I mean, start, starting my career off like, like that, where like, it's like, it's kind of like, damn, they, they're feeling the vibes are like, damn, okay. He kind of like didn't really start with anything in this industry. Hmm. So, um, it's kind of like a gloomy, like more of like a, like, okay, like, but like more, it's still encouraging. Like we're still going up from here. So I kind of wanted to give off that, that sense of a vibe. It's like quite literally starting from black and white. <laughs> <laughs> literally. It's like from the beginning yeah. of time, it, it, it goes long, it, you yeah, know, bro, think I mean, about like TV. <laughs> yeah, bro. I mean, like look at stories around the world or like any book you read, man, like you can't, you're not just going to start and it's just going to be like, oh shit, damn, he's popping already. Like that's just not how it works. Yeah. So, I mean. Is that something you want to keep up or like in the future, would you ever start throwing more color into your stuff? Nah, like I'm, I'm, gonna definitely, progression? I'm gonna definitely throw in some more color. Don't y'all, <laughs> don't y'all worry, man. I yeah. got some more color for y'all. You um, said you got a tape coming, right? I got a tape, Forgotten Souls, coming out um, May 5th, Cinco de Mayo. Oh, I like that, I like that. Yes, what, um, that project, are you trying to do something different on that compared to your previous stuff? Like, were you pushing any boundaries, um, trying to change up your sound at all, or was it kind of a lot of the same stuff you've been cooking nah, up? Kind of similar sound, um, growing a little bit, like it's kind of like each song is like, okay, like taking the next step to like, okay, damn, where he might be bringing a new sound in, so... Um, yeah, I mean, I'm excited and, um, it's like, it's like, it's just like a milestone, man. Like it's like the first, first tape all, uh, I've dropped. So mm-hmm. it's exciting. Yeah. That's super exciting. Yeah. Are you kind of sticking with the same like gloomy imagery for that kind of stuff and try all the black and white tones and trying to keep it all consistent? Yeah. I mean, I'm just trying to really like show the, like my listeners, like who I am and like, like like build a story like so they they really feel like connected with me so like they're like they're down with me at my, at my lowest points you know what i'm saying so like I, like if you start out like like i'm starting out i feel like it really shows some organic and authentic fans at least for me personally and i i'd, I'd enjoy seeing where my career goes after that yeah of course mm-hmm. do you think that like I, I mean, I know you've done it, like, very consistently and very, mm. like, aesthetically uh, mm. cohesive up to this point. But how important do you think it is to, like, curate a specific, like, image and aesthetic through your stuff, like, your visuals and kind of create your world in that way? Because I personally feel like yeah. it's almost, like, mandatory in the modern music industry. Yeah. It's like you really have to, like, just kind of build a world around your music videos and your songs and your cover mm. art and everything. I think it's so important, very important, um, because, I mean that's part of it. Like, how are you going to make people believe that you're really like, like that you're confident in your creations? Mm -hmm. Um, And I, I think that image is, is just as important. Maybe not just, okay. Me personally, as a musician, like I wouldn't say just as important, but very important to like align with your, your musical creations. So. Well, think about even like the music video now, like the, Mm -hmm. the the weight that the the modern music video holds. It's like, Mm -hmm. If you want to have a popping song, you kind of have to have a good video. Mm-hmm. It's like the two and two kind of come in tandem. I think that comes from like a lot of the way. Like I, I think you can thank MTV for that. It's like yeah, music man. videos like became instantly synonymous with like promoting your song. It was like the main like yeah. the main counterpart to whatever you're putting out. Hey, you remember that shit? What was it was it M- MTV or VH1? They had the the music videos like every every week. I was around for VH1, not VH1. not MTV. I, I VH1. VH1 preceded MTV, right? I or vice so. versa. I'm sorry, it yeah, came yeah, after. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just remember that was also another thing. Where I got, I mean, it was just another musical inspiration. Man, I used to I used to wake up every day and watch VH1 music videos oh. of the week. Mm-hmm. Shit was lit. They, yeah, they always had the most popping shit. Like they yep. had like all the hottest videos, all on that. <laughs> it was like the it was like MTV, but just called something different. They had Master P in that bitch. Yep. They had fucking Jay Z, all the goats, man. Tell me about um some of your music videos, Pain Show specifically. Wh- yeah. Well, where did the idea for that video come from? Because it's a very it's a very interesting video. Like where did the the idea of the video? Yeah. Um and like the setting. Mm-hmm. Um. Like I said, like I, I got a team of, of guys um, that I work with and obviously they I tell them like, look, here's here's the song and, and the vibe I'm going for. But I, I think it came. It stemmed from more of an idea for myself of like um, being doubted by by a lot of people when I when I came into this industry, when yeah. I started making music. 
um, a lot of people were like, you shouldn't do it. Like, you don't have what it takes. So um, that kind of stemmed from it. And that's where I got the the black and white kind of like gloomy, like, mm-hmm. like, like vibe. Um, and I just had a, I'm blessed to have a team that, that helped me execute it and create that video. And it was, it was amazing, man. Shout out, shout out to Mac. First of all, Mac visuals fire. Shout out. Yep. Was that something before you got super into the industry and before you started putting out music that you could have, like, guessed? Like, did you think that people were going to say stuff like that and doubt you, or did you kind of think people would be more supportive? I mean, it's it's hard because, like, I had... I would say, like, I had a little bit more of people, like, supporting me, than, but, like, it was mm-hmm. close, though. It was, like, almost 50-50. Of, like, yeah. People were like, yeah, you shouldn't do this. And then, like, the other people were like, oh, keep going, bro. Your shit's fire. Like, you're going to kill it. So, I mean, it all came down to me just believing in myself and what I'm creating. And, and, and I believe where I'm going. I'm, I believe I'm going to create something big. So I think it very often comes from a place of jealousy, honestly. Or yeah, like, man. but not even, let's say like somebody who like, somebody shits on you and they, they genuinely don't like your music. I think yeah. what comes, it still comes from a place of envy because they just probably think that they probably wish they had the confidence to pursue what they love. Yeah, bro, and like, it's not even like confidence for me. Like, I, obviously, you do have to be confident in this industry. It's a big actually, risk, yeah. yeah. But like, I mean, I just enjoy it. So, mm-hmm. I mean, if they don't respect that, okay, so be it. Like, whatever. I, I'm still having a good time making this music and 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 do what I do. What I do. So, I mean, doing anything creative is a big risk. Like, Absolutely. just the idea Absolutely. of like drop. Because think about it, right? Mm-hmm. It's like. When you when you set out to be a doctor, you have a path, you know. Mm-hmm. You, you you go to school, you go to med school, you do your residency, yeah. then you become a doctor, et cetera, or whatever. But yeah. do doing something like you know, like building a music media company or doing something like trying sure. to become a musician, there's no path. Like it can happen in a million different ways. There isn't like a set plan where you're like, Okay, if I take these steps I will get to mm-hmm. this place. It's all up in the air and that's what makes it scary. But that's what makes it so fire. That too, yeah. Time, bro. It's that like adrenaline, and, like you like just putting yourself out there, man. And like once you once you get that, I guess gratification that at least some people fuck with it. That 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 just fuels me so much more to. And honestly, even people who are like, oh, well, fuck this. This is trash. Like that shit feel. This just it fuels me. I'm like, okay, yeah. like all right, like I'm gonna do better still. Now you so. have people to prove wrong. Yeah, exactly. There's also no ceiling, you know, with music. It's like with music, you can 100%. get as big as you want. You could like make as much money, become as successful, get as much influence, make become a total legend, like in your own regard, to no avail. Like there's no ceiling. Whereas like, you know, once you're a doctor, you're a doctor. Like, <laughs> and then you then <laughs> you're you're doing it. You know what I mean? But it's like with music, you can always one up yourself. You can always That's, keep yeah. like pursuing something else and keep growing, keep making crazy stuff. So that's the thing, man. Yeah, I mean like. Society doesn't really normalize that that type of behavior no. to like to like really go against the grain and create something on your own. Like obviously, like your parents will be like so ecstatic if they're like, "Oh, he's gonna be a doctor," because they already know like, "Oh, he's he's gonna do A B C steps." But like, if you're a creative person, like you can never you can never like understand where his next step is going to be, so. Well, you could be Drake, or you could, like, literally be homeless. You know what I mean? Like, there's such a range. Like, that's the crazy part of it. There's nothing set in stone. Like, there's literally no path. And so, I mean, yeah, it it just takes a a different type of person to be doing that. So, I mean, it takes a lot of balls, for sure. Yeah, I think we strayed from that a lot. But the the, the, the pain show video, so it it was pretty much just based in that feeling, like that idea that you just Mm. wanted to prove people wrong. Yeah, that was definitely like an encouragement. Um, not like I mean, yeah, like I just heard a lot of of negative feedback at, like when I first started. So yeah, um, that's definitely like the inspiration for that song for sure, um, and that was the vibe I was going for in the music video. Did you um, have to learn to like take those criticisms and like make yeah, them into you know? things that like? one motivated you made you want to work harder and then two like yeah. things you could learn from like did you have to kind of learn to do that um yeah i mean it, it comes with like everything in life bro you learn lessons valuable lessons and i think that was a valuable lesson for me um 
Because, I mean, look, I'm a human being at the end of the day. So, like, obviously those those comments and criticism get back to me as a person. But you learn, or I learned as a person to, to deal with that and how to turn it into fuel, per se, or, like, something that was, like... Because at the end of the day, bro, you really can't give a fuck whatever other people think. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I I take those comments and criticism, like, okay, for sure. Like, I'm going to show you why you're wrong, so... I even think there's like value and comes from that comes from acknowledging the fact that like there's mm-hmm. people around you that you're, you're, you their opinion will always hold weight. Mm-hmm. Like you'll always care what they think, mm-hmm. but you have to learn to like be okay with whatever they think. Sure. You know, like if somebody around you who you really value their opinion shits on your music yeah. or shits on whatever you're doing, you have to learn to like be okay with them not fucking with it. You have to learn to like be okay yeah, with yeah. like the fact that not everybody is going to like like what you're doing. That's a big part of it. That's a big part of it. Not everybody's gonna like your music, and that's okay. Like, that's, yeah, that's just how music works, bro. Honestly, so. I wouldn't want to live in a world where everybody likes the, 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 what I yeah, do. You know what I mean? Feel like Loki, like a fake cartoon character. Or yeah, shit. it's like so. you're the superhero in the movie. You're the main character. Exactly. <laughs> it's like who, who wants to do that? Exactly. Um, what do you think? That's what do you think is like the biggest thing you learned since you started making music like was there one thing that you kind of come back to and you're like wow that was like a big learning experience i mean i would i don't know if it's saying like i learned but it kind of just showed me like who who was really rocking with me and who i need to keep around and who like who um who i can work with that we can also grow um I think it just showed me a lot of true colors, honestly. Yeah. I really started to see people for who they really are. So, like, a lot of people started to not believe in me or some shit after after I started making music. So, um, and there was a certain few that stuck around that I was like, wow, okay, these people are really, you know, like, putting faith in me. So, I mean, yeah, that's that's what I say, the lessons it taught me. Those people are so valuable. Yeah, to like they learn are. who they, they are, are and then keep them around, bro. It's like they really are. I value the people who like believe in above the bridge and believe that it's like going to be mm-hmm. successful and be something special. Like I value those people honestly on such a different level than I, than I do it's, from like yeah. people who just kind of tell me they're like, oh, this is cool. You know what I mean? Like, it's, yeah, especially when you're building your career. Like it's just yeah. like because like obviously we all start from nothing and we're we're mm-hmm. building, we're building, and there are gonna be people who will say, oh, that's cool, but, like, they're not really, they're showing support. That's not, cool, yeah. But, uh, and then those those people will start coming around when you start building, getting bigger, bigger, yeah. bigger, bigger. So, I mean, it, it's just good to see, and, like, it's it's good to take note when you're in that in that state of life that you're like, okay, wait, these are the people around me, and these, these are who I need to keep around me. And yeah. Have you ever had to deal with somebody like close to you or people like really close to you not just not believing what you're doing, not even trying to understand it? I don't think so. Nobody that's like super close to me. Yeah. Um, there might be like that's good. somebody that's super close to me that like will be like saying like I fuck with your music, but they not, might not actually be fucking with yeah. my music. But I mean, uh, everybody everybody that I've been super close with most of my life has been showing support and, and they've been there for me, so that's sick, bro. Those are the people we got to keep around. Exactly. Um, if there's like one message, like one overarching message that you like wanted to spread with your music and add, with your artistry, like what mm. do you think it would be? Like if there was one thing, like one idea you could translate in people's minds. Believe in yourself, man. Like there's there's so much doubt in this world, um, and uh, there's always gonna be people there telling you to to steer away from your dreams. But just just believe in yourself. You're really the only person you got. Um, And keep pushing, man. Keep pushing. You can make your dreams happen. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. All right, bro. That's beautiful. I love that message. Good thing to end on. I appreciate you, bro. Yes, sir, bro. Tell them where they can stream uh, stream the new stuff. Tell them when the tapes drop in, where they can hear it, where they can follow you. Yes, sir. Uh, You can follow me on IG at It's Pluto. And uh, I'm dropping a tape May 5th called Forgotten Soul. Streaming on all platforms. Forgotten Soul. Let's get it. All right, brother. Appreciate you, man. Gotcha, man. Music matters.